Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am uh, speaking from uh, International Plant Protection Congress, Hyderabad. So we have a great Congress meeting going on, and Adama is participating in this meeting. And today we have a special guest uh, who is part of Adama, and uh, he is none other than Professor Baruch Rubin. So good morning, Professor. Good morning. And uh, just a few words about Professor uh, Baruch. I think uh, most of us are aware of that, but just to give a few words about our professor, he is uh, a professor emeritus of weed science and agronomy at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. He has been teaching undergraduate and uh, graduate students on uh, weed sciences and mode of action of herbicides and several other courses. Currently, he is heading a group of about six PhD and four MSc students and also two post doctorates. He is the past president of the International Weed Science Society, member of the scientific community of European Weed Research Society, and more important is he is our great consultant, and I would say in Indian language, a guru for Adama. And uh, we are happy to have you here, uh, Professor. Uh, Thank you very much. And uh, we are delighted that you are part of this Congress uh, meeting as well. So, uh, Professor Baruch has been visiting India for uh, several times. So, I just thought this is an opportunity for us to, you know, have a small conversation with him. So, Professor, so how do you like India, first of all? India has uh, this a very specific uh, performance for me. It is uh, a, a giant that is uh, waking up and making huge advance and uh, progress. And it is fascinating to see how it is uh, improving the services, the, the face of it. And, uh, the, uh, the activities in science and uh, in technology, it is fascinating. So it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. So Adama India is, uh, is doing very well in India. You must be aware of that, that we are uh, one of the leading companies, agrochemical companies in India. And I just have a few questions basically on herbicide resistance and the herbicide uh, use usage uh, on uh, various crops in India. Uh, I also saw that you have done some projects on herbicide resistance and also the transi transgenic uh, crops. Can you explain how these two are related and what is your thought process on this? The uh, herbicide resistance uh, in weeds that evolved in the last uh, 30, 40 years and became an issue all over the world it is uh, a threat to the chemical companies because many herbicides that cannot, cannot be applied because the weeds are not responding to, to this uh, co compound any longer. And um, uh, we should do whatever we can in order to overcome the problem because the alternatives are not as efficient as herbicides and herbicide should be a component of the uh, weed management in the future no matter how much other techniques or technologies should be introduced the herbicide has a major part in the uh, weed management program okay thank you and one of your projects i was curious to when I was reading through it, is on the improved herbicide the formulations, yeah. uh, which will reduce the contamination of soil and water. So, can you just please elaborate on the herbicide formulation that you have worked on, or some of the ideas that you feel yes. is very critical for uh, herbicide management? We are talking about formulations which will be less move. Uh, in the soil, less movement in the soil, so they will not endanger the water table and the groundwater. Uh, this we have done in a, in a way that we absorb the herbicide on uh, on a mitel clay that uh, together they can form a less move. Uh, 
less moving chemical in soil. So if we will maintain the herbicides, the soil applied herbicides in the upper zone of the soil, we can reduce the rate and uh, prevent their movement to the uh, underground water. Uh, now this has to be it's tailor-made for every herbicide for every country because the the customs and the way mm -hmm, farmers mm -hmm. are using it is different from mm -hmm. place to place. Mm -hmm. So we have to uh, tailor-made it, it, make it to fit it to the conditions right. uh, in each country. Right. Uh, yeah, we hope that this will catch up and right, uh, right, right. some uh, companies will use this technology for Perfect. The, the other thing that more normally for an Indian farmer, however, you know, we are working with them very closely, sometimes they miss the vulnerable or the critical stage of the weed and they don't get uh, clear control, even with the best products available in the market. What's your advice or what's your thought on uh, the critical stages of weed, the vulnerable stages and how we really have to manage the herbicides spray? Yeah, the uh, tendency of the uh, big chemical companies is to develop post-emergence herbicides right. because uh, of many reasons, mainly environmental but also uh, because the activity, you know which weeds you have and which stage they are, so you can fit the rate, the required rates more precisely uh, and uh, optimize the application. However, life is not an uh, uh, insurance company right. and uh, you have no guarantee that uh, at the same days that you are planning to apply the herbicide, it will be rainy or too hot or too cold or too right. snowy or Even too wet, yeah. wet. So you have to have a flexible uh, formulation that will be active, not only in the optimum mm -hmm. situation, but also suboptimal. And this requires uh, a lot of uh, skills and uh, from the formula the person right. who are making and uh, I know that Adama is uh, working hard to uh, improve the rain fastness of uh, many chemicals and uh, to ensure that the chemicals will penetrate the plant as fast as possible avoiding uh, many uh, barriers that are on the way and uh, you cannot fight mama nature. This is uh, <laughs> a given condition. Right. 